Hey guys, it's Eric here at Farpoint Farms. Tonight, we'll be taking a look at this. This is the Tiny Signal Analyzer Ultra Plus, the Tiny SA Plus. Cool little device. I am not an expert when it comes to radio, but I do know there are some things that are quite valuable about having a spectrum analyzer. We'll get into some of them, but not all of them tonight. But let's just go ahead and get this thing out of the box. Really teeny little device here. And let's see what else the kit comes with. A couple of adapter cables. Oh, little hand cord, wrist cord, I like that. A stylist, which is nice for people with hands like my own. Another patch cord and an antenna, uh, as, long, as well as an adapter for it. So, things you can do with something like this. I like to run Part 15 radio stations. I've been doing it since 1997, 1998, somewhere around there. And uh, I use Hamilton Rangemaster most of the time, but... And I'm going to make a video on this. I picked up a uh, Talking House AM transmitter. I'll show you just how ugly those can be, but how cool they are if you get them dialed in just right. And so I run a lot of stuff. Obviously, CB, FRS, GMRS, MERS, you name it. Like, there's just a ton of radio equipment here on the house, plus signals coming in, right? So we want to be able to see what's going on. And what you don't want, especially if you're trying to talk a long distance, is for one of your radios to have a ton of interference, to, to have adjacent channel interference or like spikes, harmonics that go throughout the bands because that interrupts everybody else's ability to have a good time on the radio. So that's where this kind of stuff comes in pretty handy. So a uh, little, little teeny device, probably smaller than your average cell phone these days. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the camera a lot closer in, kind of look straight down on it because it's a little hard for me to do this like this. But, you know, as I'm talking here, I'm showing you what I've got. So let me pause the camera. We'll get the camera closer in and we will rock and roll on this thing. Let's do it. All right. Well, here we are on the bench. Go ahead and turn it on. And it's very quick to boot, as you can see. And here we are. It's just checking out the noise floor. Now it does recommend before you do any kind of actual work with this thing that you should do a self calibration test. And to do that, we're just going to hook these cables together. And we're going to get into the menu system here. All right, with this all done up, we're going to get into configuration. And we are going to do self-test. It's going to run through a bunch of things here. You can see pass, 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 right? Hopefully we don't see anything that says not pass. Cool. And it's just got one to go, but there you go. Not bad at all, right? So it's passed the self-test. Now we can go on to some of the other stuff. And speaking of other stuff, let's just go through here. All right, so first up here, we have presets, right? And you could enter in, I don't know, I guess frequencies, right? If you wanted to store a frequency range here. So like you're, you're peaking and tuning a CB radio, right? You could check these out for your 40 channels here and do that. Of course, with ham radio, maybe you want GMRS channels. Maybe you want, uh, you know, two meter stuff. Maybe you want HF uh, seven, mm, I don't know, 40 meter, let's say something like that, right? You could have that in there as a, an easy to get at way to do that. Let's see if I can use my right hand. I'm a lefty, obviously. So here we go here. Frequency, right? Manually enter in, do our uh, frequency. Now I can do the whole span, which is where we're at right now. We're looking at everything, right? We can do multiband and we can shift frequency, right? So there's a, options in there. Levels, right? Attenuation scales, that kind of stuff. So how, how, how high or low do you want that signal level to be? Right here, whatever one is, is uh, pretty low on the spectrum. Trace, right? Well, we don't need that. Display, do we want to pause the sweep? Do we want a waterfall effect? That's going to come out underneath that. I like that. I'm going to keep that. Okay. Uh, do we want big numbers? Yeah, I'll be honest with you. Sort of. <laughs> it might be handy for somebody with my kind of vision, but for right now, we'll keep it on waterfall. All right. Then we have sweep time, sweep points, sweep accuracy, rotate display, lock display, right? So there's a lot of features right there that you can get into. Right. So this is a pretty complicated piece of machinery. Obviously, it's not something you're going to need if you're just trying to install a CB radio in your car. But if you're into radio or a lot of times just electronics in general, uh, you'd be amazed like an LED light can put off a ton of stuff across the radio band. So that's not so good. Uh, marker, right? We can put spots on the on the band if we want to make sure that we got something going on there, right? Um, and then we have measure. What kind of measurement? We were looking for harmonics, uh, phase noise, signal noise ratio, 
Then it has width choices and AM, FM, I think that's THD, channel power, linear, noise figure, and there we go. All right, we'll get out of that for a second. Storage, it uh, has some capture ability here. I don't believe there's a spot. Oh, no, there is an SD card spot on the bottom for additional storage if you want that, but um, not necessary, just, just something you're aware of if you want to get into deep, deep stuff here. And we can capture and save that as well. And then we're back into config mode. We have self-test, level calibrate. Yeah, let's do that. Sure, let's go ahead. We'll calibrate that. And it's going to run through that again. It's going to take just a few seconds. Okay, calibration is complete. Touch screen to continue. There we go. All right, now there's some other stuff here that um, we can get into. Uh, Self-test, level calibration, version number, spur removal, uh, sample so if you're looking for something to, to compare it to, you can. You can change your brightness, date and time, pulse high, low output, enable ultra. I'm not sure what that one is. Uh, minimum grid lines, jog step. I don't know, a lot of this stuff. And of course, we can reset it here if we don't want to. Then there's expert config. I'm having a hard time with basic config, so probably going to leave that alone. Lastly, there's mode here. So right, we have spectrum analyzer. That's what we're in right now. But here's something else you can do. I can put a signal generator here. So if I'm trying to dial in a classic piece of equipment, if I'm trying to align an older tube radio or something like that, I can set up a frequency and turn that on and use that to calibrate said radio, which is really nice, man. Um, for right now, of course, we'll just get out of that if I can. Right, and calibration output. Right now, we're not doing anything with that, so we'll just get out of there. Okay, so uh, one more thing to talk about, and then I'm going to get a radio out to play with here. The overall coverage of this is 100 megahertz all the way to 7.3 uh, gigahertz, or seven, yeah, 7.3 gigahertz. That is, um, that's a lot of the spectrum right there. Okay, what I've got here is an old um, President Randy. I'm going to turn that on, and I'm going to go ahead and hit it. Let's see what happens. There we have our spike, right? It's showing up. And what I'm not seeing across the large sweep there is a terrible, you know, harmonic imbalance where I've got this spikes elsewhere, right? Not bad. Let me let off. I'll show that just appears, fades into the darkness. And we'll try different, we'll try a different channel here. I'll turn that radio down. Let me try a different channel just to show you. So it's marking that one. You see that's that it is in the in the midst here. So let's try channel 34. Key down again, and now we have another spike, and you can see it quite clearly. And there you go. So you can see what I mean. Like it's it's going to show up. You're able to track your signals. And I'm changing bands here, so let me go down to another channel. Let's go all the way down to one here, just to show you. It's keeping track of that one peak. And there's another one. So one's all the way to the right. And, or 40s all the way to the right or 30 I think I got it on 34 and f channel one now is spiked up and what you're seeing if you're seeing a couple other little spikes occasionally well it's the band the CB band we're in there with like things are happening other things are happening lights turning on and off AC compressors on your um, air conditioning unit or your refrigerator turning on and off there's a lot of stuff going on well, look, I've only touched on just a fraction of uh, what you get here with this. Obviously, I am not a ham radio technician. I'm not um, able to build my own radios, but I do love puttering. I do love playing, and I do love some fine tuning occasionally, um, although I get fearful getting into it too deep because I have damaged radios not knowing exactly what I'm doing. A tool like this will help me to better understand what I'm doing along with the knowledge that I can obtain on the Internet. But I just want you to think about the fact that like 25 years ago, the first uh, the first spectrum analyzer I had was a giant white box uh, with, you know, an actual screen, like a tube screen. Now, granted, it was used, but to think that we've gone from that to this in such a short span of time is pretty wild. Anyway, I'll leave a link to where you can get one of these things and I will see you next time. Take care.